This episode is sponsored by NordVPN. Welcome back to episode four of trying to fix this 1915 Massey steam hammer. Since the last episode, we've had some deliveries. Okay, who invented this packaging solution? It's awful. <laughs> oh no, you're destroying it. Isn't it one of those spinny things from the circus? They light each end on fire and oh. spin them around. Yes, sorry. Yes? Yeah. Jeez, that actually really works well. All they need to use is packing tape, Jamie. Now we've got more of this stupid. Ah! Oh, cheers, you oh, moron! It's in your pockets, Jamie. Ah! <laughs> Golly, that's a joke. These are just massive bits of bronze. These are going to be to replace that once we get our uh, shaft back from a good grinding. I love getting my shaft grind. I bet you do. Seems like it's gonna be about 10 days for that to get done. At that place we went to in the last episode. Then over here, we have the components to replace this assembly right here. We also have some components to replace our air or steam inlet. That doesn't look particularly good. I don't think it's meant to just push in, you know? You know what I mean, Jamie? Maybe it's not the right thread size. And there's two types, a BSP that's tapered and a BSP that's parallel. Hmm. This one, you have to start threading. What is going on? They both look slightly tapered. Maybe it's just because this is a longer thread. How on earth did you get that in it? I uh, ordered it on Amazon. It weighs 12 tons. <laughs> right, I've been kindly lent this pipe bender by our neighbor Steve. And uh, no, I do not know what I'm doing, Jamie. Boom. So I need a tighter, tighter bend radius. Hmm, that needs to be more like there. It's <laughs> <laughs> horrifying. You found out how this thing attaches then? Yes. So this goes right there, I think. It looks just like it. Original pipe misses it, just. I've bent it too much. This is like three pounds worth of pipe. I really should have bought more than one piece. Oh, I hate that. God, it still needs to be opened up. Lesson here, go, just take a little bit of time. Don't go too far, too fast. Right, now I've unbent it too much. You've got crazy lining it up to make sure it's straight. Yeah, is that good? Is that straight? Okay, I think we're good. Jamie, right next to me. All right, so despite the fact that we're unsure about the threading up here, we've at least got this pipe bent, come through this little strap, avoids our lubricator ending in our carrot valve. Okay, really interesting here. In the last episode, I asked what was special about a carrot valve. Remember this little tapered contraption. And it's really interesting to learn about why it exists. Now, as the valve gets used and worn, that little tapered thing it just gets driven down further, as opposed to a modern valve that might require kind of O-rings and things like that. As this wears, you just tighten it down further. The taper wears, it keeps screwing in further, you continue having a seal, and it's easier to manufacture than like a finely polished ball that would have to be in a ball valve. Now that we see where the lubricator also gets installed, I'm gonna show you something cool. Look at the drawings that Arcadius in the Discord has found for us. And right here, this is what I want to show you. We have a complete specification from 1904 about 11 years prior, on an oiler that is identical to ours. Hollow body of the oiler, a plunger, and then the outlet for the oil as well. So that is gonna be super handy if this oiler needs to be rebuilt. Next up, where did it go? We're gonna remake this puppy, whole thing. Now this is for our steam inlet. And as you can see, it's some threaded black iron pipe. And as we saw, I've received a bunch of these larger fittings. Well, they're not black. Is Gray. this the wrong stuff? The more I look at it, the more it absolutely does not seem original. Look at all those holes. Looks like a bit of Emmental cheese. I know. Unfortunately, it's not very good because, look at this, one, two, three, four. These make a square as if they are four bolt holes, which makes me think somebody at one point in time has retrofitted a malleable iron floor flange. One of these bloody thing. Oh wait, hang on, that's three holes. They could have just bought one of them. This obviously didn't fit the three hole arrangement that we have on the machine and they've just gone ahead and bought extra holes. So that's obviously not good enough. Now real quick, just got to access the internet. So here we go, there's the old data stream. There we go. Oh no! A hacker! What's he doing? Not my data. Oh no, he's consuming my data. You know what that means? I need NordVPN. I need a layer of armor. And with that military grade encryption, 
there is no chance a hacker is getting to my data. Because NordVPN is the intermediary between me and their servers, encrypting the data, making sure that this rowdy hacker is just wasting his time. Not gonna happen, pal. I've been to nordvpn.com forward slash forge. Nord has over 5,000 servers in 60 plus countries. And it doesn't just mean it keeps you safe while you're browsing the internet, it also gives you the flexibility to experience the internet wherever you want it. If you feel like you've completely demolished the catalog of your favorite streaming service, try hopping onto NordVPN and selecting a different country and find tons of shows and content to enjoy that you haven't yet watched. I've even saved money with NordVPN renting cars, because sometimes they'll charge you more if you're a tourist. So I was able to play pretend that I was in that country itself. And if you go to nordvpn.com forward slash forge, you're gonna get an exclusive discount plus four free additional months when you use code forge at checkout. It's risk-free, they've got a 30 day money back guarantee. So please go check them out. The link is down below. Let's get back to the steam hammer. We need to cut out a bit of steel, get it super clean, nice and flat. And then we're gonna weld this onto it. This little fitting right here so that we can then screw in the rest of our fittings. I presume we're gonna need a union, so I went ahead and got one just in case. And then hopefully one day we'll find some two inch pipe to feed it air. There's no way we're gonna get a good enough seal here on our gasket. So ours, I want to be much flatter. Alrighty, she sits flat. This thing will just spin right on. Ooh, so fresh and so clean. I would like to work on the one that goes here, but I only bought one of these little welding fittings and one set of pipes, so I'm gonna have to delay that. Have a think about this back valve. So I have been able to make some discoveries since the last time we talked about how exactly this works. Air inlet, we've told you about that, but I didn't know exactly where the air traveled from there, but I've worked it out. It goes at this angle around this little jacket, then enters in here at the back. That means that this thing is restricting the steam flow from the rear. As that opens, more steam goes in. As it closes, less steam goes in. Oh, check this out though. Got a little teeny hole on it. Presumably there must be a desire for it to trickle in steam all the time, just the right amount. This thing is pretty worn, but the bore itself is pretty rough and ready. I think in an ideal world that would get honed or well, yeah. completely rebored. frankly. It needs like a millimeter off the diameter at a minimum to get that surface clean in there. But in order to do that, what we would need to do- Chuck the whole thing away. Yeah, it's completely attached to the uh, cylinder of the machine, which means we could get the cylinder off, unbolt these things and lift the whole thing off. That's an option, well, but- Put this whole thing in the mill? That's the concern, I think. That would be cool, let's do that. It's an awful idea. I might could ruin it if I do that. Yeah, but it'll make a good thumbnail. It would make a freaking good thumbnail. It would be bold if we took that thing off there and uh, reboard it. I don't even know if it'd fit in the mill. Let's find that out first. Right, Alec, we've been making these videos for nearly seven years. You should know by now, we take it off first, and if it doesn't fit in, then we've got calamity. You're right, that's you know? way funnier. Yeah, come on, get it off. No, come on, we should just take the tape measure. <laughs> we should take the tape measure. <laughs> off! <laughs> 460 mil, but we need a boring head in there. This would need to hang off the table. This, no problem, we've got. It's just that this would need to hang off, which could be quite precarious, and I don't know, maybe we could like twist and snap the, the mill. Another option though. You know what preceded the milling machine, Jamie, in history? Um, horses and carriages. This is true. I was thinking a little bit more like contextually relevant though. <laughs> the lathe. Right, well, let me just stop you right now. What about this big thing here? You couldn't put that in the lathe. In this circumstance, it's not about putting that in the lathe. It's about- It's about putting the lathe in that. That's <laughs> no. so philosophical, that <laughs> We take that thing, we mount it onto this carriage. Then we put a boring bar in the chuck. So we kind of do the inverse. And that might be a way that we get more space. How the hell would they have machined this thing a hundred years ago? Like what machines were they using? Oh, it'd be so silly to try and do this but it could be so cool. Just trying to find out uh, what size boring head we'd need. We need a 25 millimeter boring head. 2,300 pounds. Hmm. If we were to re-bore it, we need something like this boring head. So you put a tool at the bottom of the hole. You guys have seen me use these before. And then this silver component 
slides in and out on these dovetails and that screw. So what's wrong with that one there then? This is tiny. If I take a tool like this and I shove it down in there, it's gonna be wibble wobbling all over the place. It's gonna be chatter city. Maybe I'm thinking about this all wrong. Maybe it's not a question of having a, an enormous stick out because this is so small. All right, after a lot of deliberation, chatting with my neighbor Steve, uh, and Jamie being a really terrible influence. We're gonna send it! So this entire assembly needs to come off the power hammer. If this fits, I'm going to <laughs> myself. The only big wrench I've got. No! Gotta make a wrench. Okay, folks, we've made a wrench. Let's learn a little bit about leverage, shall we? Or well, rather, let's teach this power hammer a thing or two about leverage. Uh. Ah! Oh no, I don't think it was the power hammer that learned anything. I bent open my wrench. I was the one that learned something about leverage. Well, that's 15 minutes in the bin. Let's make it out of something a bit beefier, shall we, Jamie? Ah! We've got a fire! Crap, I do the roof. Plasma cutting is just awful. What a mess! That's hilarious. Craftsmanship. All right, wrench V2. Oh, yeah, it's loose. Wow, I didn't, re I did not expect that. Ah, yes, come on. Oh. Uh, it's broken. I, you touch it for three seconds and you break my tool. You told me to twist this one off and it just twisted off and just bent it out. Oh no, that's so annoying. Crap, ow, my rib. Oh, is it turning? Yeah. Yeah? Ah! This thing's been a bit stubborn. See if a little heat sorts her out, you know? Ah, a little bit of heat did not sort it out. Lovely. Oh, it's going. There we go. And now we've got to work out how do we lift it safely? Imagine how long ago it was that this thing last touched the ground. What is that? 20 quid for you to eat a bit. Couple more zeros, maybe. Before we get to boring, uh, I want these things out of there. I want these studs out. Ah! Ah! Nope. <laughs> Yeah! There we go. That's it. Oh! Right, we got all the bolts out. Technique here was warm up the main body of the casting, heat a bolt to orange temperature, let it cool down, then untwist it. Otherwise, it bent. Um, but what this has done, putting a little bit of heat on here, is we can actually see how this, uh, this rear valve is constructed. There is an inner sleeve that appears to have been shrink fit into the cast iron valve body, which means that the actual casting was less complicated and they could uh, do all the machining of the ports on this before slotting it in. And I think it very well may be the same there. This little sleeve, no chance that is coming out. And so we still need to get this in the milling machine and get it bored to size. And after having conferred with our neighbor Steve, his insights have led me to believe that the best option for boring this is going to be making my own boring bar. my massive boring bar. Now, in an ideal world, the fact <laughs> it wouldn't be three quarters of an inch diameter up here, but that's the largest collet size that I have for the Bridgeport mill. And uh, hopefully it's made up for by the fact that I just went crazy on material size. It's two inches in diameter, 50 mil round. So hopefully we really avoid as much chatter as possible, but that's definitely the weakest link. As, we, as you can see, we cut down a little, uh, little mini boring bar. We've slotted it in. Our cutting tip is now in line with the center of this, so hopefully that's good. And I can push it out further 
with the grub screw that is here at the back. Now the real fun starts. We need to completely clear this Bridgeport bed and then somehow get this mounted 90 degrees, degrees, twisted and perfectly aligned on the Bridgeport. Going to be very interesting when we get to that in the next episode. So please be sure to click like if you've enjoyed this. Drop your comments down below because we love the interaction that we're getting with you guys and we love the things that we're learning. And of course, check out today's sponsor, which was nordvpn.com forward slash forge. See you soon. Bye-bye.